G'day everybody. This is our last session. It's a keynote for the Aussie Live 2016 online conference. I'm really, really pleased to have my friends with me here today. I have Manhal, Shukair and the Firebirds. Let's have a whoop whoop from Manhal. Whoa, whoa, yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And the session title today is Toastmasters, What's In It For Me? As you came into the room, you would have been issued with a little pop-up window that said, would you like this file? So all you needed to do on that one was say yes, and you can save it to your directory. It's our little handout for you today. If you are wanting more of your friends to know about Aussie Live, please use the tweet hashtag Aussie Live. I'm really pleased to let you know that our Toastmasters in the Firebirds Collective come from all over the world. And this little map just shows you how we all connect. We meet every week on a Sunday in different time zones. And we are a club in formation. Some of this won't make much sense to those of you who are not Toastmasters. So our Toastmaster of the day will explain some things along the way. And our Toastmaster of the day is Manhal. Come on down to the lectern, Manhal, and tell us what is the best kept secret of Toastmasters. Thank you, Carol. If you've never heard of Toastmasters, it really is the best kept secret around. Toastmasters is a worldwide organization that teaches communication skills and leadership. That's what they actually say, communication skills and leadership. But when you get right down to it, Toastmasters teaches self-confidence. And becoming more self-confident, you will then project yourself better. It helps you in your business. It helps you in job searches. It helps you throughout life. And this is actually spelled out in the mission statement of a Toastmasters club. So Carol, could you flip the slide for me, please? I can certainly do that for you. OK, thank you. The mission of a Toastmasters club is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And what we're going to do today is show you a typical Toastmasters meeting, although abbreviated, so we have time for questions and answers toward the end. A typical Toastmasters meeting is usually divided into three sections. There is prepared speeches. This is where people are working on a project, and each project has an objectives. The first manual is called the Competent Communicator Manual, and there are 10 projects. And they take you from organizing your speech, to vocal variety, to gestures, to research, inspiring, motivating. But it all starts with the icebreaker speech. And the icebreaker really has only two objectives. One is to get up in front of an audience and start talking. And number two is don't die. And so far, we have not <laughs> lost anybody in Toastmasters from their first speech. <laughs> With that said, next slide, please, Carol. With that said, we're going to look at different parts of the Toastmasters meeting. Just like any business organization, any club, a meeting needs a team of people to be able to function. And today, our grammarian word of the day, our counter, is going to be substitute Elise because she didn't make it that I can see, but will be Lorraine Taylor. Lorraine, can you please tell us what those functions are and why in a Toastmasters meeting? Thank you, Amen Hall. Uh, yes, so I am the grammarian, taking the grammarian role and the all counter role. Now, particularly today, we have multicultural audiences. We're all working on our languages and our speaking. And so the grammarian comes in to help us to take our grammar and our word usage to the next level. So I've got my ears open looking for good grammar, uh, 
effective words choices and also will correct any mis uh, uh, handled words in our meeting today. I am also an odd counter because as speakers we try to avoid the um, the odd, the but, because those are filler words and they do not add any effectiveness to our communication. Our word for the day is, I thought it could be woot because I thought that came out fantastic in the chat. But our word of the day is going to be jolly because we are going to have a jolly good time today. Back to you, Menhouse. Thank you, Lorraine. All right. And we're here to clap. And the reason we do this in Toastmasters, it's immediate feedback on how well somebody does. I have told people that Toastmasters is not a cult, but we do give feedback to our people. I'm the Toastmaster, and I neglected to tell you what the Toastmaster does. The Toastmaster is the MC of the meeting, controls, passes control, makes sure the meeting flows smoothly, and hopefully we will do that today. Next person who is helping us out is our timer, Brian Dodd. Brian, what will you be doing as the timer? And we cannot hear you, Brian, so if you press the talk button, we may be able to. <laughs> I have this little app on my cell phone that is going to tell me the time. And when, when um, like in the speech, it's five to seven minutes. So at five minutes, I will hold up a green card. At six minutes, I will hold up the yellow card. And at seven minutes, I hold up the red card. And then... At 30 seconds after, if the speaker is not spoken, I will begin clapping. For table topics, we um, it's two minutes for table topics, and you get the green card at one minute. At one minute and 30 seconds, you'll get the yellow. And at two minutes, you get the, the red card and the clap comes 30 seconds later. And I will give you a report at the end of the meeting. Okay. Thank you, Brian. And we had a question in the chat window about what's the importance of time. I want you to think back. Have you ever been in a meeting where it starts at 1 o'clock your time and they get there at one twenty-eight? Have you ever been in a meeting that's supposed to be 10 minutes long and it ran 44? The purpose of time is Toastmasters respects your time. Your time is valuable. And part of the different timing is to learn how to present your message in an allotted time. This is a skill that transfers into the business world very well. At this time, Carol, please have our next slide because we are going into our prepared speech. Our speaker today is Julie Cortez. She is from London. And throughout her career in Toastmasters, she has been through the Competent Communicator Project many times. She has some objectives in this project, which is the Research Your Topic Project, and her evaluator is Lorraine Taylor. Lorraine, so that we know what Julie is trying to accomplish, could you please read her objectives? Yes, uh, happy to do that. So uh, the, not sure why my photo's not coming up, but uh, the objective for the Project 7 is, and the Project 7 is research your topic. The objectives are to collect information about your topic from numerous sources, and also to carefully support your points and opinions with specific facts, examples, and illustrations gathered throughout the speech. As this is a Project 7 speech, I will be looking at her uh, the skills she learned from Project 1 through 6, and I will also be adding in her uh, skills from looking specifically at Project 7. The time for the speech is 5 to 7 minutes. All the best to our speaker, Julie. Thank you, Lorraine. Please help me welcome, Jer Please help me welcome Julie Cortez with her speech titled, Dare to fail. 
Dare to Fail, Julie Curtis. Seven years ago, I was still very young, only 75 years old. I don't see myself speaking. I am on video. We see you and hear you. Okay. And uh, after I spoke the very first time at the table topics, everyone told me it is wonderful because we all get feedback. But in the break, I went to a uh, Toastmaster who had been there for a long time and I asked him, what is your opinion? And he told me, it was great, but your accent, yeah, I knew. My accent was not really British. I am a Hungarian and I lived a long time to, in France and just arrived in London at that time. So immediately after the meeting, I went online and I begin my research, accent, British, bestseller. I wanted to buy a book and learn better British. And the book which came out like bestseller, its name was How to Get Rid of Your British Accent. So I decided I don't need to get rid of my British accent, which I don't have, and begin to prepare my icebreaker. My icebreaker title was, and the ice did not break. Telling about my wartime memories when I was 10 year old, and then we had to cross the Danube River because there were no more bridges, and because they asked my mother to go to the Russian camp, military camp, and that she didn't want to be raped, we crossed the Danube on the ice. The problem was, I had a wonderful feedback from audience, but suddenly the light came and I froze. And indeed, the ice did not break because I never finished my icebreaker speech. But I fall in love with the audience because they were so receptive, they liked what I told them. And so the second time around when I had to organize my speech, I gave a speech about my nose. I remember the time when I wanted to cut it, to have a shorter nose, and how someone told me I don't need because it goes with my character. I was told at the end that my conclusion is not strong enough. At the third time, it, you have to make a point. The project three, and I had a point, a very important point, which tells it is never too late. And I am still making the same point, speech after speech. Now that I am 82. The fourth was the more difficult, because it says you have to speak with short sentences and sure words. At that time, arriving just, I did not know many four-letter words. 
of course. Now, stand-up comedian, I did learn, and I used some of them. So after I finished, they asked me, what is your point? Number five arrived, and I read a whole book about body language, speaking about it, but not using it enough. And so someone else told me, but your voice variety is wonderful. My voice variety, it meant in good British that my body language was not uh, good enough. And number six, which was about voice variety, and I gave it in Washington in an old club I have been 30 years before, and they told me, your body language is wonderful, meaning, but your voice variety still has to improve. In all, in every project, I learned something more, and my courage went up, and I even participated to a humorous speech contest, which I never believed I will. Yes. And this time, I begin to tell stories outside Toastmaster. And the projects in Toastmaster Manual helped me to give it better, because I there. fail or to make mistake, I learned every time something more. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Julie. Good speech. And what happens in Toastmasters as we progress through these projects, people start out at a certain level. And each time they do, they go a little better, a little better. And you see this. And about project number seven, you see a jump into their confidence level, and they keep improving and improving and improving. That's what Toastmasters does for you, is just by getting up in front of an audience and start speaking, you will improve. Because the fear of public speaking is the number one fear worldwide in surveys taken. <laughs> The next section of a Toastmasters meeting is impromptu speaking because just me talking to you can be impromptu. You talking to your kids, you talking to a coworker, and it helps to be able to communicate that message. To lead our impromptu session, which is called Table Topics, please help me welcome from Maryland in the U.S., distinguished Toastmaster, Susan Ellsworth. Take it away, Susan. Greetings all. Have a question that has been bothering me for quite some time. And the question is this. If you have never been into an online Toastmasters meeting, tell me what you expected to happen and what actually did happen, I'm going to call on Ms. Crouch to respond to that question. Ms? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just had to get some sound in the room turned down. Oh, I wasn't expecting to be called on, so it wasn't an issue before. So the question, what do I expect to happen at an online Toastmasters meeting? I'm assuming that's the question. What do I expect and what, what is actually happening? OK, my expectation was, uh, knowing only a small amount about Toastmasters, is that there would be a series of opportunities for different people to speak. 
uh, that would mean that they have either been given topics to talk about or they generate some topics themselves. And what is happening is fairly similar to what I expected, though I didn't know there was such a formal process for that. All right, I have one more. Did we lose Susan then? It looks like we did lose Susan right there. So to fill dead air, which we're not supposed to have, I will ask a table topic question. I've got it. I'll we got it. Susan back. Oh. Yes. All right. Yay. All right. <laughs> the table topic question is this. I've noticed that as firebirds, we do have a jolly good time with each other. And we spend a fair chunk of time with each other. Coach Carol, tell us, are you really having a jolly good time? And have you got friends that say, gee, Carol, do you have a life outside of Toastmasters? Carol. <laughs> OK. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. I'll just reiterate the questions. Do I have a life outside of Toastmasters? I'm going to begin with that one because you know I don't. <laughs> well, I used to. I used to. I, I did all kinds of things in my life. I was a teacher, professional development officer instructional designer, and then I think I became a wife, and then I became a mother, and now I'm a grandmother. And you know what? I'm having a jolly good time in all of those roles. But you asked me specifically to say, am I having a good time in Toastmasters? And I have to say, yes. Mostly. The, th the thing that inspires me most about my Toastmasters these days is challenging me outside of the square, outside of my bricks and mortar clubs. I come to Firebirds. Now, Firebirds meet online. We sometimes wear silly hats. We sometimes have food and drink. Uh, some of it is in glasses like this one. Sometimes it's in glasses of a different shape. We meet across time zones. And I enjoy mostly being able to exchange those cultural ideas with people right across the globe. And you saw earlier a little map that showed just how far our firebirds stretch. Let me go back to that map and show you again. This is our Firebird Silk Road. You all know the expression, the Silk Road, I know, from your history books. Well, Firebirds are creating a new Silk Road in connectivity and connections with Toastmasters. Thank you so much for the question, Madam Table Topics Master. Let me summarize for you. I can find my slide again. <laughs> In summary, yes, I thoroughly enjoy my time with Toastmasters in Firebirds and in other places. Thank you so much, Susan. Have we lost Susan again?
Maybe we maybe, have. Maybe we have, but that does conclude our table topic session. The most important part of a Toastmasters session is our evaluation, which gives you instant feedback on what happened. But before I introduce our general evaluator of the evening, I'm going to jolly well get that jolly word into some kind of jolly speaking so that I can <laughs> step away and go make some jolly good time popcorn. Anyway, after that was done, our general evaluator who will explain everything you want to know about evaluation section and why we really are here in Toastmasters. Please help me welcome Advanced Communicator Gold, Advanced Leader Bronze, Carol McCulloch. Take it away, Carol. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. I am the general evaluator day, today. Nothing to do with military. It sounds very officious. But it's not really. It's the way in which we direct the second half of our Toastmaster meetings to give the feedback to those who have spoken for a short time or a long time. In my role as general evaluator, I introduce the evaluators and I introduce those who will give us a report. And today, filling in as both evaluator and our counter and grammarian is Lorraine Taylor, who I noted in the text chat earlier is in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. I would like to invite to the lectern, she's there already, Lorraine Taylor, would you please tell us how you would evaluate Julie Cortez's speech? Thank you, uh, Carol, the general evaluator. It is my pleasure to evaluate Julie's speech, a 75-year young speaker. And she is, in our Firebirds, known as our storyteller. She engages us right at the start with a story. And we know that today, storytelling is the most effective way to engage an audience. And Julie does that so well. She engaged us not only with details, but with vivid language that allowed us to create vivid images in our minds. Her purpose of her Project 7 was to research a topic and to collect information. But I'm going to back up a little bit more in that one of the main purposes is to make sure that she gives information that's useful to an audience. So although a Project 7 would be researching in depth a research topic, Julie did a great job of using this speech with this audience. So she researched the project that we would be doing as a Toastmaster up to Project 7. And this was very effective for our audience who is listening and trying to learn more about Toastmasters. So I not only am evaluating her, her Project 7, but how she was able to move through the other one. Her Project 1, she explained, was her icebreaker. And in our icebreaker, we are trying to be authentic. It's all about being who we are. And that just shone through very, very well. She also, uh, project two was to organize her speech. She started with a story. She moves chronologically through project one through project five. And then she finished with a strong message. And her message was, no matter how much we fail, we should continue to try. So a very effective um, organization of speech. She got to the point. Now, I would like to also know, it's not just about content I'm looking at, but I'm also looking at how she delivers the presentation. We notice that she has, within our little window that we have here, we can express. And she used her eyes. She, when she looked surprised, she brought her eyes up. And that communicates to our audience. Project 5 is Body Speaks, and she was using that. A few suggestions I would like to make for Julie is to use more of the body speaks. We have a small area, so we can use our hands. She spoke of making a point. She could make a point with a one finger 
or hold up a card. So I would encourage her to use more body language within the little square that we have, as we know that will uh, effectively engage an audience. In summary, Julie is a master storyteller. It is one of the most effective ways. She used Project 7 to uh, researching a topic that was very important to our audience. I encourage her to work on uh, adding more body speaks, but thank you, Julie, for the message that you gave us that no matter how hard, how much we fail, we just keep trying again. Over to you, Carol. Thank you so much, Lorraine. I enjoyed listening to your evaluations because they are so thorough. It makes the speaker feel 10 foot tall. And I think that is one of the best ways to encourage more speaking opportunities. The better you feel about your activities, the more encouraged you'll be to repeat. Rather than tell us all the things that were wrong, as Julie obviously experienced in some of her early days, it's far better to look at those positives. And we use a, a number of different techniques. The sandwich technique, where we have praise on the top, improvement in the middle, and praisement underneath. Praisement? Hmm, I just coined a new word. <laughs> When we evaluate, we try to evaluate everybody that takes part in a Toastmasters meeting. And we usually evaluate the impromptus as well. But Manhull tells me that this is a practice mainly in Australia and New Zealand and not one practiced as much in America. I don't know why. Maybe we need to teach you guys something. <laughs> what I'd like to do is evaluate the very first impromptu speaker. Unfortunately, Ness has had to jump away, so she won't be able to hear this until she reads or views the recording. I will use the tried and true traditional way of saying what I saw, what I heard, and what I felt. And what I saw immediately was a person put on the spot she wasn't expecting it. And what I heard was a very skilled speaker immediately deal with the question, repeating it. And I think it helped to have it written on the board for her. And what I felt was that Ness was a really good sport and she gave her best effort for the question that was posed about what do you expect when you come to a Toastmasters meeting? And what actually happens? And she did that very skillfully, although in a short version, but told us exactly from the heart what she expected and what she actually experienced. So that is my evaluation for Ness. My, my point of improvement for her would be to speak a little longer. We try to get our impromptu speakers up to the minute. So speak for 60 seconds if you can. All in all though, Ness gave a grand effort and I have to say something else about Ness, that she has been an absolute wizard in supporting us in the whole of the Aussie Live 2016 conference. Without her, I wouldn't have been able to cope. Yesterday I had to have a nana nap. It was too busy. We were on the go from 8 a.m. right through till 7 p.m. And luckily, <laughs> Ness was there. We do have a number of other supporters too, so thank goodness for them. Now, the second evaluate, the second impromptu speaker was myself. Now, I'm not going to evaluate myself, so I'm going to do something extraordinary and ask people from the audience how you would evaluate my impromptu. So I'm going to ask Peggy first of all, what was something that you saw in my impromptu?
Oh, yes, please do type it in, Peggy. That would be great. And while you're thinking and typing in, let me see if Shambles could enter with the microphone. Are you able to give me some feedback on what you've heard, Shambles? No, it looks like he's on a mobile device. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Peggy. Pacing is something that I really focus on. Let's see if anyone else has any other comments. Put them into the text chat. And let me call back on my Table Topics master, Susan, and tell me if I answered your question to your satisfaction. Don't forget to turn on your mic as well, Susan. There we go. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we have you. Good. Carol, you were a wonderful sport. You and I have turned into being very dear friends over the many, many months together that we've been and over that long distance between the USA and Australia. And I've been dying to find out just the very question that so many people have asked me. Do you have a life outside of Toastmasters? Because I know that in addition to being the Vice President of Education for Firebirds, you're also an area governor this year, and that's a very, very busy life. I had never heard you talk about being a grandmother. Delightful. One of these days, perhaps we'll see some pictures. Who knows? It's all up to you. But yes, you did help me understand that there is another part of you, Carol, and I'm delighted. And if I could, I would pass over this wonderful big hug to you from <laughs> the USA Just to do Australia. Fist bump. Fist bump. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Wonderful. All right, we now move to the reports. And Lorraine has been listening to us and will now give us a little brief report on our grammarian usage of the word today, jolly, and how we have not used fillers or maybe we did. Lorraine, how did we go today? Thank you, Carol, for introducing. The, and I'm pleased to announce that we were uh, effectively using the word jolly in the chat box and particularly impressed with our visitors to our Toastmasters, Peggy, Joe, Ned, all uh, very ambitious with the word jolly. So that is fantastic. The uh, jolly was used by Manhal and Susan and Carol as they were giving their uh, pieces of information. So fantastic word there. The ums and the ahs, uh, I noted that in the chat box that uh, Peggy said that we had all mastered the ums and ahs, and I think that we did today. As speakers, we are doing very well. We are very keen to listen to ums and ahs and ands. And as Toastmasters, we have done uh, very well today in getting rid of those and pushing them out the door. Some, the grammar today uh, was good. There was really no issues. I could have chosen a couple of things, perhaps, that Julie said that weren't exactly correct. But given that Julie's working in her fourth language, I think I will leave it at that and be just impressed. Uh, the few words that I thought were uh, great and, and gave a vivid image, Manhal said, uh, fill dead air. And that conjures up a great image. There was uh, Susan or Carol said, life out side of Toastmasters, so a nice visual image, and the word Nana Nap. I don't, I understood from my meeting I had yesterday in my brick and mortar club that today is 
World Sleep Day. And so you are allowed, Carol, and anyone to uh, have a little nana nap in any public place. So over to you, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll try not to fall asleep at my desk right now. Thank you so much for that wonderful report from our grammarian and our counter. It was really interesting to see how you were able to pick up on what was in the text chat as well as what we were actually saying. There's so much to report on in a meeting. But today's was quite short, so my job as general evaluator uh, is almost done. But let's hear how we went with the timing, because as Manhal said, timing is really, really important for us as speakers. So Brian, would you like to tell us a little bit about the times that we had for each of our components? Yes, Madam General Evaluator. Julie's speech was 7 minutes and 19 seconds. Had that been in our contest, she would have not been disqualified because you're allowed that 30 seconds after the 7 minutes. Ness was kind of short at 21 seconds, but I don't think I hit the, the start button quite on time. It might have been a little longer than that. Carol, in, in the, her table topic was 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Perfect for a speech, uh, table topic speech in a table topic contest. Lorraine on evaluating Julie was 3 minutes and 28 seconds. She had 2 more seconds to spare. Great timing. Carol's evaluation of uh, Nessus was 2 minutes and 2 seconds. And I was giving her three minutes in case she was going to evaluate herself, but I didn't time that part. In the in the grammarian's role, in the Amana role, Lorraine was two minutes and two seconds. And I didn't put the start on me, so I was perfect at one minute. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. It's always there as part of our Toastmasters meeting to have someone being in charge of the timing. We do it in various formats. Today Brian was using coloured cards, sometimes we use coloured lights and we've had some very interesting alternatives to those, a red apple I remember and a green napkin. And online we tend to try things out a little more uh, than we might in our Bricks and Mortar Club. Today's Toastmaster job by Manhal was exceedingly out of the box. He has a way of engaging with the audience and will always be the one who will call on for a Toastmaster role because he does it with such ease and panache. My point of improvement for you, Mr. Toastmaster, is to tell us a little bit more about yourself right at the beginning, especially to an audience who don't know you. Now that's a very minor form of improvement. In summary, the meeting has gone extremely well today with all of the normal components that we would put in place for a demonstration meeting. And now I'd like to hand back to our Toastmaster of the day who will conduct the final segment of this session. Back to you, Manhal. Thank you, Carol. Just to let you know, Toastmasters is the largest nonprofit self-help organization in the world. It consists of over 325,000 members in 100 and look at the number right, in 16,000 clubs in 138 countries. Toastmasters is here to help you. The organization is geared around the members and around your self-improvement. You are not alone when you begin your Toastmasters journey. There are members, there are officers, the structure of the club, the structure of districts, it's all for you to be the best person you want to be. I encourage you, if you're interested in joining Toastmasters, if you think from this small demo that it can help you, Find a club near you or an online club. 
go to Toastmasters.org. There is a Find a Club button. Put in your country, your city, in the U.S., your zip code, postal code, and it will help you find a club near you. Visit the club. Talk to the members. Visit us in our online club. Online clubs are coming to Toastmasters in the near future. We are a pilot program to test this out and have been doing it for over three years. It is a well-established format for us, and we are all at ease with it. But I do encourage each and every one of you to check out a Toastmasters club near you and become what you can be. At this time, I'd like to open up. Do we have any questions? There's a question from Peggy about the timing cards. And she's asking it specifically about the use of iPads. And we do have a, an app that we can use on any mobile device that allows us to show colored lights for the timing of all the segments of a Toastmasters meeting. And I often use a, an iPad. Others use a mobile phone, as Brian was using today. Let's see if there's anything else in the text chat. Uh, Shambles is saying that it was a great idea to model the process today. I'm hoping that you all found it to be of interest and of use because of that. At this point, uh, I'm looking at Lorraine's comment about going global. And we really need to hone in on the need for skills in this particular arena. We've just been through a, a very busy set of presentations from people from all over the world in our Aussie Live 2016 conference. And I note the difference in the way people speak. I note that in different yeah. cultures, it's, it's uh, a little more of interest to hear the accent, but it's always useful to have a person comfortable in their speaking. Now, let me open it up and find out if there's any other comments from people in the room. And meanwhile, here is the app on iPhone. Excellent, Julie. Thank you for sharing that one. I would like to make a comment today. I was at a speech contest, and one of the contestants who was Chinese spoke in a British accent because she learned to speak English in London. Shambles, wow. to answer Thank your you, question Bob. about in English, no, there are, I think, eight different official languages that Toastmasters use English, Spanish, French, German. Chinese, Japanese, Arabic. However, what I've found in my travels, and some of us have travel are from different parts of the world, we find that some of them actually use Toastmasters clubs to learn English and be more comfortable in it. I was visiting a club in Ethiopia, and one of the members was a vice president for Ethiopian Airlines, and he was using that to become better and more proficient at English. Again, it's what do you want to get out of it? Well, for, the, for, for those of you who wonder why the, uh, the screens jump up and down and somebody makes a noise and their name comes up, it's because this, this platform we're using is activated by the speaker. So while it, when the speaker is speaking or makes a noise, their picture comes up big and stays on the screen until the next speaker starts speaking. Thanks, Brian. Susan? Something I'd like to share with everyone is that Toastmasters International does not provide the meeting platform for various different clubs. The individual clubs 
makes that decision. As it happens, Firebirds has not used this particular platform before, so it's been yet another typical Firebirds experience where we're trying out new things just to see how they work. Normally, we have used GoToMeeting, but we have been looking at some other applications as well. I think it's a hallmark of the Firebirds group that we try new things because we know that, okay, if it doesn't turn out exactly the way we thought it would, we've learned something new. Sort of like Julie. You have to try out something new. Thank you, Susan. And Shambles, did you want to come to the microphone? Yes, if I if I may. Uh, love the session. It was great, and uh, um, I have to obviously learn to speak 80% slower than I normally speak. But uh, <laughs> the enunciation and pronunciation is great, which makes me think this is a wonderful structure for English language learning. Um, because often we speak too quickly. So my question is, I wonder if the time is timing me. The question is, um, is there any experience of this being used in schools with younger people? Is there an age group? Or do you find very young people will join the sessions as well? So, and, and this is a question to anybody in the room now, is are there any experiences? How would this translate? How would this... Uh, metamorphosize into a, a, a K-12 situation. That's it. Thanks again. Thank you for I, that, I'm, Shambles. I'm going to ask Manhal to answer that one. Toastmasters itself is 18 years or older. However, they have what they call gavel clubs. And gavel clubs are two different things. One is for people under 18. And in our area in Dallas, Texas, we have a number of gavel clubs at the different high, different high schools. There's also a program called Youth Leadership where you go and introduce Toastmaster skills to young kids. I've done two youth leaderships. One was with kids between 15, uh, 14 and 16 at a church, and the other one was with the juvenile detention center for people coming out of incarceration. They were turning 18 and being released. And we were trying to help them learn communication skills so they could have a better chance in the workforce and not go back to the way they were. So yes, to answer your question, there is Toastmaster-sponsored organizations for children under 18, but a true Toastmasters club is limited to 18 years and over. I, I am also involved in the, uh, what's called Skills Canada, and they have a contest for school-aged children in for speaking, in uh, public speaking. And that goes all the way, uh, it's all around the world, and the uh, world final is going to be next year in Dubai. So anybody wants to find out about that and, and pet school children or grandchildren or children that you want to enter, let me know and uh, we'll find out how you enter. Thank you, everyone, for answering that question. That uh, was a really super-duper one from you, Shambles. Thank you for that. And we are passionate about our Toastmasters, as you can hear, and we are constantly teaching. And one of my dreams is that any speaker who wishes to be a presenter or a keynote presenter online would benefit from coming along to a Toastmasters club. It needn't be an online one, but it could be. I don't remember how many clubs there are across the world, but there is one close to you, I'm sure. Let me now move to the final segment of our session. I just need to go to this slide. And before I wind up and, and do the summary for our conference, I'll just check with everybody if there's anything else you would like to say. Just pop onto the microphone if you do. Uh, 
Absolutely, Lorraine. That is a, a clear testimony that we see over and over again. People who come in who are fearful of speaking and leave with confidence. Excellent, Peggy. I'm so glad you could join us today and thank you to everyone. I need to also thank our sponsors for our Aussie Live 2016. They include now Adult Learning Australia and the Broadband for Seniors, as well as our own team of Australia E-Series. I can't get by without my team. They have been extraordinarily helpful. And this year we've welcomed into our team Peggy George from Phoenix, Arizona, and Joe Frey, who is in the audience with us today. You've been very quiet, but you're always there, Joe, and we value your support always. Ness Crouch, of course, and Mershon, Junita Lyon, Michael Graffin, and we span most of Australia as a team. And we've been doing this now for three years, and next year we hope to do another. It will be slightly different. Thank you to our Toastmasters who finished our keynotes today with a wonderful demonstration meeting. We hope that that has inspired you also. Thank you to the learning revolution. When you leave the room today, you will be asked to fill in a little feedback form from the learning revolution who are our supporters and our partners. And yes, Joe, we need to say a huge shout out. Thank you, Steve Hargaden for providing the Blackboard Collaborate rooms. None of this has cost us a penny, but it has cost us a lot of time and effort, and we value that. Thank you, everybody. At this point, I'll now close this session and say thank you for everyone for joining in with Aussie Live 2016.